evolved in, in, in my local hospital up in Archway, which was facing privatisation and cuts. We've had Lewisham Hospital as well, so you've got those localised um, protests as well. And Lewisham, they've been successful. And there's other examples. There's um, the electricians who went on strike against Balfour Beatty, one of the great multinational companies. And they didn't just go on strike, they took part in occupations and direct action. So, and they won. And all of these show that it is possible to win um, and the different strategies, it's not demonstrations, direct action and so on, strikes as well, but it shows it is possible to go and organise and win. And that's what, if the anti-austerity movement's going to be successful, we can't just wallow in defeats. We have to talk about those victories. We have to not think of strategies of being in conflict with each other, but complementing each other, that people should go off and do their own thing and work together when they can on an issue-by-issue -issue basis. And I think that's what we're doing. I think actually... People realise the stakes are high when, you know, we've got a million people dependent on legal loan sharks. We've got half a million people driven to food banks for the seventh richest country on earth. And we have the longest fallen living standards since the Victorian era. We just can't afford to fall out with each other. It doesn't matter how peaceful those protests will be. The media is not on your side. The media will do everything it can to demonise you, to attack you. Either just ignore protests altogether and pretend they haven't happened. Or to focus on any outbreak of... Of, of so-called disorder and portray that in the worst and most negative way and that goes back a very long way. In 1984 police officers on horseback uh, charged at minors and beat them up and then uh, changed the witness statements in the way they would later do at Hillsborough uh, smearing those responsible. It was an act of state violence against working people fighting for their, for their jobs. The BBC ran the tape in different in a different order from actually what the events took place were to make it look like the miners had attacked the police tonight police put on display some of the weapons they say were used against them there's talk about riot shields and riot helmets that simply is protection for the officer this was a very infamous example of outright media well they were just lying it was literally just a lie the advantage we have today is social media because i still think I use this as an example about how social media, how effective it can be. If during the Battle of Orgreave people had phones and Twitter and they could video what was going on and then tweet it out, it would have been a lot harder for the police to be able to uh, work with the media in the way they did to stitch up the miners and make it look like they're the victims. So I think protesters have to really be savvy about using mobile phones and, and, and social media and video and photos. That's how we know what happened to Jody McIntyre who was obviously taken out of his wheelchair in a protest. That's how we know what happened to Ian Tomlinson, who was killed by um, um, a police officer throwing him to the ground. Uh, it's how we know about numerous other examples of police brutality. So we need to use that as effectively as possible because the media, as I say, is not on the side of protesters and will demonise them, and that, that includes the BBC. It includes almost all of the main newspapers.